This is our audience tonight. They don't know we're watching them, but there are surprises in store for Kathleen Johnson, who at the least is going to save the price of a stamp, Sylvia Cox, who's going to be in a tricky position and get more than she bargained for, and Walter Hastings, who's flown from Canada to find the family he lost in 1919. For these people and more, it's surprise, surprise! Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. Welcome to another Surprise Surprise, the show that surprises most surprising people and occasionally even we get surprised in the letters that we get. Oh and I must read, can I read you please a couple of letters that I got, can I? Yes! Oh yes, let's be bold. <laughs> Thanks a lot Sam. I love this one. This is from Claire and she's on East Heaven. What? What? <laughs> and she says... She says, Dear Scylla, please can I dress up as a cowgirl and ride on a brown horse for the day and shoot my mum and my brother? <laughs> and then can I ride off on my horse? <laughs> oh, and that's Claire, age seven. Now, every mum who's got a seven-year-old daughter called Claire will be wondering if it's her. <laughs> I'm a poet and don't know it. <laughs> Here's another letter. Now, this is my favourite, favourite one. <laughs> It's from Carol Clark, and she's from Sunderland. Yes, it's you, naughty Carol. And she writes to say, My mum is 60 years old, but looks quite young, really. And since she's retired, she's had all her teeth out. <laughs> and she's turned into one of those people who sit in front of the telly with no teeth in. <laughs> so please, please, Silla, could you look straight into the camera lens and say, Irene Rowell, put your teeth in. <laughs> So I'll do that again. Here we go. It's your fault, Carol. Irene Rowell, put your choppers in. <laughs> I could just see an hour put the set. Oh, God, blimey, yes. <laughs> but we love getting your letters, you know, so keep on writing. Actually, I think we all enjoy getting letters, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. And I remember years and years ago, you know, when I was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm getting a hot flush just thinking about it. <laughs> I used to have a pen friend, you know. I did. And I'm sure lots of you out there, you must have had pen friends in your days. I'd actually, stick your hands up those who've ever had a pen friend. Come on, gang. Oh, look at them. My, what? Oh, goodness me. Oh, well, look at him. You're nervous. I'll go to you, Chuck, on the front row. Yes, you, Chuck. I'm going to ask you about your pen friend. <laughs> well, hello. You stuck your hot little hand up like that, didn't you? Yes. What's your name? Ronnie. Hello, Ronnie. Now, how many pen friends how, did you have? I've got four. You, you've actually got four now? Yes, four. All over the world? No, no, only just in this country. Oh, in the... You in... greedy little sunshine. <laughs> and how long have you been writing to your pen friends? Oh, about a year. 14 years, I think, it's all together now, yes. Well, we've had, and we've met, uh, I've met a couple of them. Have you? Yes, yes. Well, well done, Ronnie. Thank That's you. Ronnie down any more while I'm up here. Come on, any more? Come on. Oh, yeah. oh, I can see someone smiling there. Yes, yes. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean, no, no? <laughs> you don't know what I'm going to ask you yet. What's your name? Cat. Cat? <laughs> no, take your hand away, because you look as if you're picking your nose. <laughs> No. Have you got a pen? Have you got a pen friend, Kat? Yes. Well, tell, tell us about your pen friend. Um, <laughs> she, comes, she lives in the States. In oh, York. does she? Yes. Lives in the States. Um, What's her name? Roma. Roma? Yes. And how long have you been, have, have you been writing to Roma? Oh, God. Um, 45 years. 94. 90, you shut your gob, you yeah. have <laughs> 45 years? Yes. Have you ever met Roman? No. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise, oh, Kathleen, no. you're going to meet her tonight because no. we've flown her all the way over to oh. just to be with you. Come in, Roma, oh. and meet Kathleen. Oh. Down here, 
Roma and Kathleen, look at that. Are you all right, Kathleen? Yes. Are you? Is that a nice surprise? It's beautiful. I just can't believe it. <laughs> well, at least it saves on the stamps, doesn't it? <laughs> Has it made you a night? Oh, yes, certainly. Yes, definitely. Oh, you brought a clean <laughs> did too. Yes, we? Well, you're the one that knew all about it. Yeah. And you've been writing for 45 years. Yes. And Roma tells me that since she was nine, and you obviously were very young as well mm. at the same time. Was it 41? 40, 46. Yeah, 41. It's amazing, 41, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how did you start, well, how do you find a pen pal like like Kathleen here? Our fourth grade teacher yes. gave us an English assignment, oh, and we that. had a accent. Our fourth grade teacher. teacher. <laughs> That you and we met, um, yes, writing yeah. each other. Yeah, from school, from school. you know, just we all wrote and then we got replies back, and that was it. Isn't that nice? During, During the war, during the war, isn't yeah. that lovely? Well, I'm sure you've got a lot to chatter about, <laughs> and I'm going to get on to the next item, okay. and we're going to go over to our Bob Carroll's. Now, I don't know where our Bob is, I believe he's somewhere in Sussex. Hello, sir. <laughs> I'm here at, uh, this way. I'm here at Burgess Hill at the moment, and inside this house is a young man I need to see. He should be behind the door. David? Oh, my God. David Edwards, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Come here, David. I was a little chat with you. Surprise, surprise, oh, David, isn't it? Well, your sister Deborah yes. sent a little note explaining that uh, your ambition has always been to be a chat show host. It has indeed. You can do better than these David <laughs> David Frost. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, you know. Hello, Frosty. But, but lady, your big opportunity. We yes. are going to, tonight, right now, in your house, do your chat show. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's surprise, brilliant. Surprise. Brilliant. Well, we've got to set the cameras up, and we've got to get all that ready, but very shortly, we'll be broadcasting live to millions. Brilliant. On your, the David Edwards chat show. Great. Very good. <laughs> which famous people he's got to interview. Anyway, we'll find out later. But right now, I have got to make a phone call, and I'm going to ring a Charles Jenkins. Now, he lives in Wembley. He's a painter, not just an house painter. You know, a proper painter. You know, he paints landscapes and things like that. So I'm going to phone him up, because I want him to come on the show and paint me. <laughs> oh, dear. And look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Aww. This is Robert the Robot. Yes. <laughs> and he lives in Wembley. Oh, let's die. Let's, oh, quite local, really, isn't it? Oh, I hope he's in. It's ringing. There you go. It's still ringing. Hello, good evening, Hello. Hello. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Could I speak to Charles Jenkins, please? Uh, what's the name? Pardon? What's the name? Charles Jenkins, painter. Oh, what number are you on? <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Charles comes from, a, well, what number am I calling? Oh, it's the restaurant, yeah. <laughs> obviously phoned a, a wrong number. Anyway, my goodness me, I wonder, can we do that again? Well, I'll have to. <laughs> oh, Charles, I thought, you know, you see, see the long nail slip of the finger, you see? Here we go again. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> that is a four, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there. There you go. <laughs> Hello, it's the restaurant again. Hello? Hello? Hello, could I speak to Charles Jenkins, please? I'm speaking, yeah. Oh, surprise, surprise, Charles. It's Scylla here. Yeah, you're joking. I know you. <laughs> Honestly, this is Scylla here, speaking with a voice. Sounds like her. <laughs> it sounds like her. It 
it is me, honestly, Charles. Is it? It is. By the way, do they call you Charles or can I call you Charlie, Charles? No, they call me Chaz. Oh, Chaz. Mm. Oh, that sounds very sexy, Chaz. <laughs> oh, you are sexy, are you? <laughs> I know all about you. Yeah. Yeah, apart from being very sexy, you've got a, a big talent in painting. Oh, someone's been talking about me, have they? Yes, they have. In fact, it's your Debbie. Debbie? Yes, yeah, she wrote and told me all about you. Oh. Yes. <laughs> she told me that you do these marvellous landscapes. Well, that sort of landscapes, yeah. Yeah, well, on next week's show, you see, Charles, Chaz. Yeah. Sorry, Chaz. I want you to come on and paint a portrait of me. Will you do that? On the show? On the show. Well, I'm not a portrait painter, but I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it'll help, Chaz, eh? if it'll help you, I'll lie down. <laughs> <laughs> will you come back next week? Sure. Or will you come on the show next week? I still think I'm on blind date. <laughs> will you come on the show next week, Chaz, and paint me? You, not for me, because I know what you're doing. Describe yourself to me. I mean, are you the sort of Robert Redford type? Uh, short fat. <laughs> well, that's not Robert Redford type, is it? <laughs> but anyway, will you come on the show next week and do a lovely painting for us, would you, please? Sure. You will? Yeah. Oh, Chaz, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week, then. Okay, then. All right, love. Ta-ra, then. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. <laughs> well, it's time now to see what Gordon's got for us on this week's search line. Over to you, GB. Hello, Scylla. Look, you see, I promised you last week got rid of that old stool, we've got your settee of your own. What do you think? Well, let's say it's a start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people are never satisfied. Come on, Gordon, clear that throat and tell us what you've got on the search line this uh, week. Well, there's no cake in my mouth today, so I'll carry straight into it. Uh, last week, you may remember, we featured a number of wedding stories on Searchline, and this week we start with another nuptial puzzle. Now, this uh, lovely wedding album was left with the steward of the Trade and Labour Club in Works Up Nottinghamshire by a guest singer. She said that she was a friend of the couple and that they would collect the album from the club. Well, that was two years ago. Until last week's search line jogged their memories, staff at the club had forgotten all about the album. So, if you recognise yourselves from this picture, give us a call, please. Now, take a good look at this. In 1956, it won the Picture of the Year Award. It shows the dramatic rescuer on the 26th of February, 1956, of Joan McCowan and her 17-month-old son, Dennis, from their blazing shop in Fulham, London. It was snapped by a passer-by and made the front cover of the Sunday Pictorial. That takes you back a bit. Well, Bert Ray is the fireman seen leading Joan and Dennis to safety. He's often wondered how Joan and Dennis have fared since. So, if you're watching Joan and Dennis, please give us a ring. And I'll be back later with more Searchline, but now it's back to Scylla. Oh, you certainly will go on. <laughs> <laughs> but what's red, I must ask you a question, what's red and 18 feet long? I don't know. What is red and 18 feet long? Well, it's not Bob Cowdery's nose for a start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fire engine. Yes, and a fire engine with a difference. I saw a fire engine last week when I went along to Hillingdon Fire Station to deliver a special syllogram to fireman Bob Bradfield. Here I am at Hillingdon Fire Station. Now, Bob Bradfield, who's in charge today, thinks that there's going to be an inspection by the top brass. Now, won't he be in for a little surprise when he finds out just for today, I'm the top brass. Now, when the fire bell rings, him and his crew are going to be sliding down that pole there. So let's get on with it. Ring that bell. <coughs> Can't wait. Come on, Bob. This is an emergency, isn't it? <laughs> Bob! Surprise, surprise! <laughs> It is Bob Bradfield, isn't it? It is. Yes. And you were expecting, you know, the top brass to be here today to inspect you. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel about me being here? Silly. <laughs> Why do you feel silly? 
Uh, I've been had. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? You know, you've been had by apart from me. No, I haven't got a clue. Well, come here. I'll tell you. You've got lovely children, haven't you? Yeah, two little brats. <laughs> you're Stacey, isn't it? And who else have you got? Carrie Ann. Yes, you're Carrie Ann. Well, they wrote me a lovely letter saying that they think their dad is absolutely wonderful. And I think all firemen are wonderful. And we thought we'd all get together today to surprise you. Thank you very much. Now, what are you going to do to your Tracy and Carrie Ann when you get home? Uh, I'll give them a good talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to wait till you get home, Bob because they've got the day off school, and here they are. Come in, Carrie and Stacey, there they are. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? They wrote the letter, didn't you, love? Yes. And you did say your dad was absolutely wonderful, didn't you? Yes. And what are we going to do with him today? We're going to the silogram. Yes, I've come here to deliver you a silogram, Bob. Thank you, Zilla. And I tell you what, we won't even have to use your own fire engine. We've got one of our very own. Come on, come on, kids, let's go. Hang on, hang on, wait a minute, hang on. I think you should make a proper entrance, Bob. Yes, go on, get back up that pole. We'll watch, won't we, kids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gobsmacked. <laughs> Tonight. Where are you, Bob and the crew? Oh, there he is. <laughs> We're going to take a break there, but we'll be back in a couple of minutes to see the David Edwards chat show. I can't wait. And to spring a few more surprises on you. See you then. Well, I hear everything's ready with our outside broadcast cameras at Burgess Hill. So let's go over to our Bob and David. Are you there, Bob and David? 
Yes, we're here, Silla. <laughs> we're, in, uh, we're in David's parlour right now. We brought the cameras in, the lights and the sound and everything. And he's all ready to go. He's in the hot seat. Do you want a little chat with him before he starts, Silla? I was just wondering, David, love, you look sweet itself. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Have oh, you well, gotten over the Silla Chuck. <laughs> Are you, have you gotten over the shock when Bob knocked at your front door? I did get a shock. I had no idea at all, sir. So absolutely no idea. And are you looking forward to interviewing all Very your famous guests? Very much so. Guests? It's a um, shame I'm not interviewing you, Silla. Oh, well, you never know. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. <laughs> you might be able to do that another time. Good, you're on. But in the meantime, if you're ready, fire away with your questions to I'll your first guest. I'll fire away, then. And my first guest this evening needs no cue. It's none other than Alex Higgins. Uh, hi, Alex. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Apart from being a well-known snooker player, you're famous for the ever-present cigarette. How many do you smoke in a day? Well, to be honest with you, David, I've cut down quite a bit now. In fact, I'm only smoking a cigarette after every meal. I'm about, uh, I'm down to about 40 meals a day now. <laughs> <laughs> We're always hearing from the press that there, you know, there's a great amount of rivalry between you and Steve Davis. Is this true? Well, I mean, Dave, to be honest with you, would you play with someone that smokes, drinks, swears, and is a bad loser? Not really, no. Well, neither will he. I think, I think. My second guest this evening is none other than the star himself, Freddie Starr. Good Aye. evening, Freddie. <laughs> that was a quick change, wasn't it? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> right, David. It said you have a great amount of style. Do you prefer to wear a particular type of dress? Well, I, a dress. <laughs> I don't wear dresses, love. Um, no, actually, um, I wear teddy boy outfits. And I've got some shoes at home, and then them teddy bear boy shoes, and they've got the one with the thick soles. Are they crepe? No, I think they're quite nice. <laughs> You're a star in more ways than one, but are there any stars you admire? Yeah, me, 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 me favourites, uh, Elvis. Uh, I like Elvis because I'm a better singer than he is. You think so, do you? Well, I am now. <laughs> well, I think that's enough of Freddie Star for now. Moving on to his Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, no less. My third guest this evening. <laughs> 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 Recently, it's been a busy time for all the royal family, especially with Andrew and Sarah getting married. Did you enjoy the wedding? Oh, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> it was my wedding night. Did you and I have the royal coach? Uh, no, we taught ourselves. <laughs> you are not afraid to speak out on a variety of subjects, but do you mind talking about the other members of the royal family? I don't understand. Who do you mean? Well, what about your little Willy? <laughs> Why do you not mention that? Uh, well, moving straight along, then. Thank you to all my guests, especially His Royal Highness. Thank you for coming Thank you on, very sir. Much. It's a lovely and place. don't go away, because after the break, we'll be right back with the one and only, the comic star, the international famed person, Bobby Devereaux. I think he's doing very well here, isn't he, fella? We all look forward to that, so see you later. See you later, Chuck. <laughs> now, here's something else to look forward to. Some weeks ago, Mrs. Anne Appiawith, gosh, I hope I've got that name right. <laughs> anyway, Anne wrote to us and told us about her husband, Garant, who is the rector of Penal and the vicar of Chorus in Welsh Wales. And she told us he's a frustrated cabaret singer whose ambition is to sing in a nightclub. So we decided to send our Bob up to Welsh Wales to surprise Garant at his church. In a few minutes' time, the uh, service will be over in this lovely, quaint little church in this beautiful little village. And the Reverend Garant Apiaworth will be coming out to say cheerio to his congregation. At least that's what he thinks. We've got to find a, a place to hide. I think... Uh, somewhere around the church wall. So come with me. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Reverend Apiaius. Morning, good surprise, morning. surprise. Nice to see you. Come over here. How was the service this morning? <laughs> yes, very good. Lovely. Your wife, Anne, wrote to us, actually, uh, telling us that you've got an unfulfilled ambition. Did she? To be a cabaret singer. Oh. Is that right? Yes. Well, the first thing I've come along to do is to audition you, you see. Is that all right? Is that alright? So, what's your favourite song? No, come here, surprise, surprise. This is with, no surprise, surprise. This is with Scylla, you know. Oops, <laughs> what's your favourite song? 
Come on. What, what about Homewood Bound? Believe. What about you've got to blame Anne? He doesn't believe it. I'm, I'm the answer to your prayers oh. this morning. Please don't go, I beg you don't go, for I need you here with me. I adore you, there's no one. Right. <laughs> what is me? Come on out here, give a nice round of applause for that. That's brilliant singing. No wonder you've got such a good congregation. Well, I think you've passed the test. Have I? And we've, uh, we've actually arranged for you to be a star for a night at a very famous cabaret club. Um, and it'll be, it'll be wonderful. Just think about it. Think of the lights. Yeah. Think of the excitement. The roar of the grease paint, the smell of the crowd. Yeah. And burnt chips. <laughs> so come with me, you're gonna be a star. Right. Come on, Grant. <laughs> well, what an easy surprise, but you know there's more. There's more. <laughs> we arranged for Grant to sing at the famous Blazers nightclub in Windsor. And the stylistics kindly agreed to let him appear on the bill. So we join them just now as the curtain's going up. Or actually, it's going sideways. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is cabaret time at Blazers. Good evening. Our additional item on the program is a surprise supplied, and we're very grateful to, by LWT. So now, a nice round of applause and a warm welcome for Bob Carroll Genies. Thank you, Del. A short while ago, I went and did a hit with my hit hat on a young man who lives in uh, Mid Wales. We had to go to a church to do it because this man is a reverend and his ambition has always been to be a cabaret singer. His name is the Reverend Grant Apiaworth. Come on, Garant. Do you recognise anyone in the audience tonight, Garant? We've actually coached in a lot of your close friends and your congregation from your beautiful little village in Mid Wales. Another little surprise we thought we'd add to him, ladies and gentlemen, which he knew nothing about. Ladies and gentlemen, could I leave you with a fantastic singing voice? of Garant Hapiawas! Smashing Paul Young, eat your heart out. <laughs> Garant is in our audience tonight. Come on, Garant, stand up and take a bow. <laughs> now, if you were watching last week, and if you weren't, naughty, naughty, because you see, I phoned a Sylvia Cox, who used to be a contortionist. Anyway, I invited her onto the show, and here she is. Come in, Sylvia. Oh, 
Oh, Silver, we had a lot of fun last week on the telephone, didn't we? <laughs> yes, I feel a bit ashamed of myself. Why? <laughs> Swearing. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, how did you become a contortionist? At what age? I started dancing classes when I was three. Really? Did my first show at four, and it went on um, during the war, during the bombing, in the Hyde Park gun sites entertaining Gosh. the troops. And then I turned professional after the war. Well, we've actually got a photograph of you when you were doing your act. Have a look at this. Isn't that brilliant, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Look at that leg. Oh, oh, did that bring tears yes, to your eyes? It makes me that? envious because I certainly can't do that now. That must have cleared the sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did invite you on the show last week and invited you to do a little bit tonight. It is a little bit too. Well, it doesn't matter. We want you. To, don't we want to see her? Don't we, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Look at that! All the support we've got. Out. going to my head. <laughs> Sylvia, that was very, very good. I'm more comfortable standing on my hands than my legs, actually. I know, you told us on the phone last <laughs> because week. Because all the, the droppings dropped down. <laughs> all, 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 the, what, all the droppings dropped down? All the veins. And what are you, a parrot or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, you oh, certainly dear. haven't lost a knack. And no. I hear, actually, ladies and gentlemen, both... Uh, Sylvia and her husband Marty belong to a local amateur theatre yes, group, don't you? Yes, I do the dancing for the pantomime and um, you do? my husband does the singing and the yodeling. I know! <laughs> I know he's a local yodeler. <laughs> and as a little surprise to you, he's going to yodel on the oh, show tonight. No way. <laughs> I've been getting in such a state and, <laughs> and, and not taking the dogs out and things like that. <laughs> no, you, you've got to be kidding. Can I go somewhere? What? No, oh, it's your husband. I know. <laughs> and he's the local yodeler. And he's going to yodel for us tonight because he's absolutely brill. I saw him at rehearsals. Come in, Marty. Come on, lad. Oh! Teach you how to yodel just like me. It's easy when you're singing to go yodel. Now first you take a deep breath and it's K-O one two three. Then you'll hear a yodel if it is sing close to me. Yeah, this is how to yodel. Hi, do you? No, not now, it's over. <laughs> I think you did ever so well. <laughs> Tell me, you know, I Sylvia, don't... you know, you were part of a double act, weren't you? The Arlette yeah, the sisters. Arlette sisters, yes. Oh, now, it was super. Was yes. it? Yes, we travelled all over the country together. How long were you working together? Oh, two or three years. Really? How, and how long is it since you've broken up, then? Thirty. Six and a half years, I is think, it? was the last time I saw her, yes. Have you, have you seen her since then? No, I don't even know where she is. Oh, you haven't, have well, you? Well, she's here, yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Come in, Irene, and surprise Sylvia. Where are you? Thank you. 
Um, Can you still go up the wall? No. <laughs> Oh, I mean, that was not. Did you see the performance? No, I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> oh, glad you didn't. He'll do it again for you later. <laughs> Miss Marty, could you do us a favour, Chuck? What's that, lovely? Could you take yeah. our uh, Irene off and, for a quick cartwheel? I certainly could. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin, Martin, don't forget your old lady too. <laughs> That's what happens when you marry a contortionist. <laughs> we'll be back later, but please, please don't go away, because as I say, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Hello and welcome back. Now let's slide over to Gordon on his new set here. <laughs> Right, well, does anyone remember signing this tablecloth? During the war, Ted and Lily Andrews, who lived in Asansol, West Bengal in India, held open house for the British forces posted to the area. For many of the men, it became a home from home, and they would sign this unusual visitor's book. It was the responsibility of the youngest daughter, Doreen, to embroider the autographs. Well, now, some 40 years later, Doreen would love to meet up with any of the old regulars. So, Nobby Clark, Robert Taylor, Tubby Burbeck, Thomas Holmes and Wally Steptoe, to name just a few. If you're watching, Doreen wants to invite you all to tea. In our quickie section this week, we're looking for Duncan Blair, who in 1935 lived at 3 Ashvale Road West, Glasgow. And also for Hilda Benfield, sister of Joe Vivian, who was last known to be living at the cottage Swan Lane, Puddle Trentide in Dorset, with her husband Sid and their two children, Trevor and Joan. And Agnes Talbot, who was born in Leeds on the 2nd of November, 1929 or 1930. She and her sister Jean were placed in a children's home at 123 Street Lane, Leeds. They were evacuated to different foster homes in Gainsborough, Lincolnshire, in September 1939. If any of you are watching, please give us a ring. Our researcher will be on 01205 5222 until 10 o'clock tonight. But don't worry if you haven't got through by then. You can still write to us at Surprise Surprise, London Weekend Television, London SE99 6YW. And I'll be back with more on Searchline next week. With that, back to Scylla. Thanks a lot, Gord. <laughs> well, I think it's time now we went back over to Bob Cowdery's and company in the heart of Sussex. Are you all there, Bob? Hi. Can Hello, I... Scylla. Welcome back to my show. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, David. <laughs> right. Well, now we've got the real Bobby Davro at last. We managed to hold yes. him down, you know, at last. Thank you, David, for inviting me along on your chat show here. Well, you're more than welcome. My first <laughs> guest of many, hopefully, Scylla. Right. Your act is said to be very varied and incorporates many, many characters. Tell me, where do you get your material from? Where do I get my material from? Um, well, I usually find characters that I can impersonate very easily. It's very easy to do impressions if you've got someone that you can, like, sort of um, get a sort of a mannerism. I could yeah. teach you how to do impressions. Please do. Do you want to sort of do an interview? Who should we try, Bob? Should we try, a, we try someone, um, like, an interviewer, Russell Harty? All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name's Russell Harty. My guest needs no introduction whatsoever because he hasn't seen the book. Right. Good evening, sit down, shut up, make a cup of tea and go out again because you're rude. <laughs> David Frost? Okay. Hello, good evening and welcome. <laughs> welcome to my show, good morning, good morning and welcome. <laughs> A touch of the Robert Day, is there? Right, if I could move straight on to the final it's question, though, please. Yeah. <laughs> the final question, I better think I better return to normality. You know, right, normality. I hear you started your career early by doing impressions at school, Bobby. Yes, indeed, I used to do the school teachers. In fact, I remember my, one of my first impressions was of the headmaster, who used to sound like Howard Wilson. And he used to say, uh, uh, turn to base 610 in your physics books. <laughs> and all that. <laughs> Did they hear about the Yeah, I used to get caned frequently for taking the mic out of the teachers. Really? Yeah. I've heard that, actually, uh, Bobby, and I've actually got a couple of gentlemen here that want to work with you about it. It's your uh, English and history teacher, Mr. Davis and Mr. Sutcliffe. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, how are you? What a nice surprise, isn't it? No, then. He's Welsh. He's Welsh, you see. 
<laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I used to take this guy. Oh, I used to take you off terribly. Peter, how are you? Or, or sir, very pleased to see you. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't handed in my homework for ten years. <laughs> What a surprise! You swines! You turn the tables on me. Hey, Bobby. I think Bobby is quite surprised here, sir. I'm very surprised. I'm so pleased about that. I've got another detention coming up now, silly. You know that, Have don't you? you? Well, it's our way of getting our own back. Oh, you rotters. Oh, We're not dear. rotters. You're the rotten one. You did a terribly wicked, ooh, impersonation of me. I know, but it, it can't help it, silly. You know what I mean? It's great to see these lads. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think you've all done marvellous on your chat show over there. I think David's been brilliant. What about the head, the teachers over there, though, Bob? Yep. Weren't they good too? Mr. Davis, <laughs> Mr. Sutcliffe. Coming in, though, teachers. He gave me my first six. He did my first six of the did slipper, I think it was. Well, uh, teachers my, over there. What do you see the impressions I used to do of them? Go on, yes, then. I'd like I used to. <laughs> 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 Mr. Sutcliffe, right? I used to, I'll borrow the glasses. Can I borrow the glasses? <laughs> I, used to, I used to do an impression of him sitting in the front of my desk there, and I used to, do, he used to have this habit. He used to go, <laughs> and Mr. Davis, you used to have a bit of a twitch, actually. Did you used yes, to have that? Habit, yes. We used to walk down the street behind well. Mr. Davis, and we used to do a terrible impression of him. We used to go so we're walking down the street like this. We go. <laughs> 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 you never got us doing it, though. Do you it was know, all Bobby, done in I nice think stages. you're ever so brave, sitting there. And, and don't you think David was wonderful interviewing oh, you? Oh, wonderful! Tonight? He's got a, a job ahead of him there, but unbelievable career. <laughs> I hope so. So, Sign if anyone's watching. watching. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Silla, from, uh, I think from Bobby and his teachers, who are going to give him yeah. six of the best in a minute, especially the one with the twitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and from myself, and at home with David Edwards, I think it's, that's enough from us, and thanks very much. You've enjoyed it, haven't you, Dan? I have enjoyed it. It's been great fun. Hope to see you all again. Thanks <laughs> Maybe I can come on blind date, Silla. I will. <laughs> David, when you're famous, can I come on your chat show? Oh, any time, Silla, any time. All right, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of laughs. Oh, yeah, a, a lot, lot, lot of laughs. Thank you all. Ta-ra, then. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. You're nice. Well, I'm going to introduce you. Can I introduce you to all these lovely people? Oh, sure. Yes, yeah. well, ladies and gentlemen, everybody at home, this young man here is Walter Hastings. Now, Walter, tell us where you're from. Well, I'm from Canada. From uh, Canada? Yes. But you weren't born there, love, were no, you? No, I was born in uh, Wembley. In Wembley? Wembley, yeah. It's a long time long ago. long time ago, yeah. Can I tell everybody about you out there? Oh, sure. Well, Walter wrote to us a very moving letter, and he told us that his father died when, we, when he was very young, and Walter was put into care with the rest of his family. Now, the last time he saw them was in 1919. That's 67 years ago. And shortly after that, you were sent to live in Canada, is that right, Walter? That's right. Yes. And Walter desperately tried to trace his family, and in particular, your brother Percy. Yes. But sadly, uh, Percy died, he didn't he? passed away, Adam. Yes. Sooner. But, Walter, you heard about Surprise, Surprise all the way over there in That's Canada, right. didn't you? I sure did. Because yeah. you discovered you had a nephew. That's right. That was Percy's son. Was Percy's son, yeah. And uh, indeed, that's when our action team went right into action because we found out that Percy had five sons, making Walter here an uncle of, well, five times over. Yeah. So we flew Walter here all the way from Canada to meet the nephews he's never ever seen. And they all met in a hotel in London and we were there to film it, weren't we? Yeah, that's right. Well, the person who instigated all this that yeah. uh, you wrote to us about yeah. was uh, your big nephew, Peter. Yeah, Peter, right? yeah. We've got him here for you to meet. Yeah, that's so, good. So, Peter, yeah. come on through if you would. Yeah. This is your Uncle Walter. Hello, pleased to meet you. What do you, you know, hey? What do you know? Yeah, it's a moment of truth, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. It's very nice yeah. to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Have you had a good journey? Same here. Oh, yes. Yeah, Come right. yeah. He's a good-looking lad, isn't he? Yes. As you know, Walter, Peter's got four brothers, again, yes. who you've never met. So, Peter, can I rely on you to uh, introduce your brothers for us? This is Cyril. Hello, Uncle Walter. It's a great pleasure yeah, to meet yeah. you. This Hello, is John. 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 Very pleased to meet you. 
This is Pat. Or should I call you Uncle? This is Dave. Hey, nice to meet you. There we are. What a bunch of these five. I think the best thing I do while you have a little chat is open a bottle of bubbly. I'll do that. Yes, of course. You would never have known, in fact, that you had any nephews or nieces at all. No, no. Well, I did. Uh, I thought we was all uh, headlong levity, you know. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 we just uh, ah, spread that oh, out. Oh, 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 <laughs> just the right thing yeah. to see all the yeah. uh, uh, meeting. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> Champagne, yeah. Well, let's have a, yeah. a little click on well, that. Well, yeah. you, you know. so, one more. Yes. 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 There's a lot more to come, but uh, yeah. a lot more shampoo on me. <laughs> <laughs> but could I, on yeah. behalf uh, of you all, and thank you very much, and well, especially Walter for coming over. I can't say reunion, the union. The union. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And that's Walter, right. here's to you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Here's, here's to Walter. 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 Good start. Good help. Good help. Here's to you. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah, oh, it's probably in the morning. <laughs> I see the sort of thing is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the sort of thing you think of happening to yeah. other people. Yeah, that's right. and, uh, Never to yourself. So you don't know on television. <laughs> <laughs> Walt, and as you give them a little wave, there are all your nephews out there in the That's audience. Right. Hi, lads. Well, I have to congratulate the TV company because the police couldn't find them, and finally they uh, give me a tip that I uh, 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 write the TV company, and uh, this is the result. I know, and it's a marvellous result, yeah, isn't it? A marvellous result, yeah. Well, you've got to brace yourself just a little bit now, Walter, because I've got one extra surprise for you. No. I have. No. <laughs> well, there's one person that I... you haven't seen for yeah, nearly I... yes, there is. 70 yeah. years. Yeah. Yes, his I, name I is I Ronald Hastings. Oh, my God. And it's your <laughs> other brother. Come in, Ronald. Hi. This is a marvellous reunion. What a happy ending, eh, Walter? I'm broken up. Oh. <laughs> Good luck to the All right. everybody watching at home we've come to the end of surprise surprise for this week and I'd like to say a very very big thank you to all the people who've taken part especially our Bob Cowdries so until next week see you ta-ra then ta Number.